Welcome to the latest Info Brew. I am delighted to be joined here today by Vam C. Cora, of Gothi, CEO of Gothi Analytics. Uh, Gothi is a data analytics company who was just acquired by, recently by Apexon. Prior to founding uh, Gothi in 2017, Vamsi was an executive at J.P. Morgan, where he was deep in the area of data. Um, you know, Vamsi, welcome, uh, welcome to uh, InfoBrew. Thank you. Nice meeting you, Audi. And then, you know, one thing I have to say is really delightful about having you here is you're a, a rare guest on InfoBrew. You're a, a technologist who's won a business award. So, uh, congratulations on uh, winning uh, ENY uh, Award, Entrepreneur of the Year. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, this one, compared to a few others that uh, uh, Gati and, and I received over the last uh, two, three years, this one feels special because this came from uh, industry peer group uh, managed by EY um, uh, in an in a extremely, um, you know, what, what, how would I say, extremely elevated CEO level uh, yeah. kind of group. So this one feels like an, a, a true industry validation. So. This feels good for the team. It, it is a great validation. You know, one thing, um, you know, we do a lot of work, uh, you know, I've done a lot of work with modern application development and trying to develop modern, modern systems for, for businesses. One of the great challenges is you know better than your data. So how do you think about the right kinds of data and the right ways to manage that data um, in, in as we go into this world of modern, you know, with, with modern applications? The modern data architecture, the, see, the modern applications, especially digital uh, channels, have been um, have become more sophisticated much faster than underlying data assets. So, retail industry and some of the tech companies and some of the service companies like Uber and, and so on, they really revolutionized how uh, customer interacting operations interacting applications much faster, you know, in the last one decade. So companies have become extremely sophisticated in their application development much faster than they could modernize underlying data assets. Uh, and that coupled with regulatory demands in regulated industry like financial services and healthcare, uh, they really started ramping up modernizing data assets in the last you know, four or five years. And I would say we are in the middle of that uh, revolution. Um, you know, every company is modernizing their data platforms as we speak. And cloud and cloud native uh, technology, tech stack and, and um, microservice design and so many other aspects are also helping revolutionize it. So to answer your question on how the data and the modern application modernization can come in sync is purely by delivering highly dependable data with a lot of context at scale and on demand for applications irrespective of where the data exists. Because the fact of matter is, between now and next 10 years, most large organizations will have their data spread between RDBMS structures, mainframes, and file structures that are on-prem, as well as some of them on one or multiple clouds. Mm -hmm. This is where the reality is. So making sense of all of this data, and giving context to the data, and still make it dependable for consumption of applications, that is a huge challenge. And this is where industry leaders are you know, showcasing data fabric um, and you know modern data governance and master data management techniques and so on. So that is a key place where so much of effort and so much of investment and that's going in for large corporations at this point. Now you mentioned in passing kind of master data management. Everyone, of course, loves master data management. Uh, so can we get rid of that as we go forward and just make life a lot simpler for all of us? No, uh, it, it is, it is. Uh, I, I, you know, I see and we, we all see a uh, number of claims that are being made about how um, certain tools uh, who can wrangle, who can prepare the data much faster in memory can, um, you know, take away the need for models and MDM uh, and data governance. It is actually, um, you know, the opposite is true, which is as you, when, you know, the days when there was one RDBMS that has an enterprise data warehouse and a BI platform on top of it, and you have an MDM solution that meets certain demands of, 
you know single view of customer single view of product and and uh, channel of engagement so on the life was much more simpler for a cdo uh, chief data officer of a, of an organization these days because data is so um, spread across on prem and, and multi cloud environments um, and regulated industry having to go through certifiable critical data elements certifiable kpis certifiable kris your need for extremely robust data governance with info stewards and and cdo office playing a key role and need for an mdm is has never been more acute than today um because regulators and the need for control on data to make right decisions about your customer means that you need robust data governance um however the traditional sense of mdm uh which felt as if every solution requires a extremely heavy loaded hammer that is uh, going away for sure i think that's where some of the claims of you know uh, whether mdm is needed or not are coming from mdm concept is needed uh, probably not as a heavy hammer and highly um, uh, in sometimes what feels like a highly constraining a uh, highly regimented flow of mdm process uh, may not be needed um, you know so these days uh, all the chief data officers and caos are ask, are asking the right question which is any mdm spend these days uh, are going through rigorous uh, uh, scrutiny which is what is exactly the business case and what is the roi and what is an operational need of certain mdm investments i think all of those are good questions um because the traditional mdm components of data quality data profiling certification now can be achieved through extremely comprehensive microservice design patterns uh, that 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 are available in on cloud native environments that we are moving into so one of the thing you you talked about a couple of different concepts there you know one that that that, that kind of came out to me was this whole notion of context um and they're saying the context and there's a saying that you know you know you're working on enterprise software if they're going to be running it after you've retired uh i think the same is true of it sounds like the same is true of data that you know you're working on enterprise data sets so <laughs> they're going to be using it in 20 years <laughs> that is true um so the context so, you know, we all know uh, you know people uh, very casually in our days call data is new fuel uh, which is true uh, but the problem is if you don't have the context of that fuel that you are talking about to run an engine or a decision engine of an organization then you are in trouble if you see large corporations at times uh, getting fined um, in in number of ways uh, you can open any of these publicly available documents and you will see very clearly um, most of the uh, kind of a blame if you will are pointed towards lack of data governance data quality controls and certification processes and all of that you know are you can attribute that to people who are certifying it are using the data not having enough context of the data for me context of data is like context of any brand product or a service which is what is it where is it available at what grain and what frequency the updates are happening and by the way who is in the organization are using towards what purpose if you can answer these six or seven questions then you make somebody who owns a decision engine their life easier because yeah. they know whether this specific data set is the golden uh, standard of data set or not and most importantly a question always is answered is about how effective your data science practice is data science practice effectiveness of that practice is directly attributed to how much context a data scientist or a group of scientists have on data sets if you have the right context then you absolutely can make most out of your data science practice today come lot of companies have too much data we all know that but very few companies have proper context about the data in its entirety and uh, when you don't have it then you are prone to making wrong decisions um and equally worse your very expensive resources spend so much time to understand the context of the data uh, on all the questions i just mentioned 
when you when when they spend 60 70 percent of the time in trying to understand their data sets and trying to use them to find a champion solution and once they find the solution trying to operationalize that for day-to-day -day uses that is where most of uh, effort and money and time is lost um, right now so context overall is is exceptionally important uh, this is one reason why when we built our cloud native platform called IC4 uh, it, it was supposed to be IC3 initially uh, we added uh, another C into information lifecycle you know the four C's of information management you know you you curate the data you you contextualize the data and, and then and then you consume the data and so on that context is what we added that gives you output you know the everything that you need to know about a certain data sets or a group of data sets that are available. Well, this has been really uh, clear that we're just scratching the surface on this. Um, so thank you for the time. I think everyone's going to come away with a very a great clarity that context is critical, okay. that apps without the right data is a disaster, <laughs> and, uh, and that uh, you're glad to go and talk a lot more on this, uh, anyone who wants to call. Uh, sure. Thank you for Absolutely. thank you for sharing your passion and uh, thank you for sharing your time. Anytime. So. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.